welcome to Gumbo Limbo Nature Center. I'm Christy Collins and today we're going to be at our shallow tanks learning about the importance of our mangrove and nearshore habitat. Mangroves are one of the few species of plants that can actually tolerate growing in and near salt water, which makes them a vital part of the saltwater ecosystem. There are three species of mangroves growing in our South Florida backyard, red, black, and white mangroves. The red mangrove is usually found closest to the waterline. Mangroves have extensive root systems that provide a safe nursery and refuge from predators for many species of fish and invertebrates. The trees indirectly also provide food by dropping their leaves into the water. This decomposing leaf litter, called detritus, is consumed by small organisms which in turn are food for the tiny fish. Common fish in this environment can include mohara, sheep's head, saltwater catfish, snook, and juveniles of other common species including grunts, snappers, barracuda, jacks, and tarpon. Mangroves are not only important to fish, but people as well. Mangroves with their extensive and tangled root systems help to hold the banks of the intracoastal in place. The roots of the mangrove keep the sand from shifting and washing away. Mangroves also function as a storm break for the mainland. The tree branches and leaves help slow down winds that come rushing in during violent weather events like hurricanes. The roots and trunks help reduce the amount of storm surge that is created. Let's go take a look at our next shallow habitat, the nearshore reef. Nearshore reefs are typically found in less than 20 feet of water and within 200 yards of the shoreline. Not a lot of corals are found in this area because the wave action tends to make the water a little cloudy. Not to mention the shallow water allows sunlight to produce heavy algae growth. However, what you find here are algae, sponges, small fishes, and worms. One type of worm in particular is responsible for the creation of many nearshore reefs, the sableariid worm. This worm creates a protective tube around itself using sand and mucus, using neighboring worms as building blocks. This also provides lots of nooks and crannies and hiding spots for other sea creatures, including shrimp, crabs, urchins, small fish, and even sea turtles to call this area home. As the fish outgrow the mangrove nurseries, they use the nearshore reefs as a stopover before swimming out to the coral reefs and open ocean. Nearshore reefs boast an impressive variety of fish life. Not only will you find the stopover fish like snappers, grunts, and groupers, but also eels, stingrays, small sharks, wrasses, angelfish, and parrotfish. One of the great things about nearshore reefs are the easy accessibility to enjoying marine life. There are some threats for nearshore reefs like over recreation from boats or anchors. Divers and snorkelers can impact the reef by crushing worm tubes that make up its foundation. Additionally, trash from beachgoers can blow into the water and become entangled or eaten by marine life. Some things we can do to help are, one, be aware and careful when dropping anchors. Two, do not touch reefs when snorkeling or diving. Observe from a distance. 
and three, refuse single-use plastics and other materials to help reduce waste. These small changes can have a huge impact on the health of our ocean. Thanks for joining us on our virtual tour of our mangrove and near shore habitats. See you next time.